On my podcast today is a man, a man that has become a legend. <laughs> a man who predicted what Bard Crawford would do about a year ago when I interviewed him. A man who has become a legend from the streets of North Philly. They say he's not just a man. His mother sent him to the store at 12 years old to get a pack of cigarettes and a pound of ground beef. He came, he came back with leather pants, leather gloves, and half a track, half a truck of Newport 100s. <laughs> on my podcast today, ladies and gentlemen, is the one and only, if you find another, he's a phony, ladies and gentlemen, Greg Haggett. What's going on, my guy? I'm chilling. Appreciate that. <laughs> yes, sir, man. We had talked about that. I was like, man, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this when we go live to see how you feel about it. <laughs> What's going on, man? Another beautiful day, man. It's sunny outside in Chicago, man. I'm, I'm, I'm just happy to be alive and happy that you took the time out to, uh, to kick it with me for a second. You know. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Hey, what did you think of the results of that fight? I didn't expect it to be a, a, a blowout, a shutout like that. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the biggest thing I think was the education between the two. Mm. I mean, you can see that Bud, I mean, really worked on his game, but not only that, like over the years, he understood that he would one day be in a fight of that of that magnitude. Um, Spence, on the other hand, it looked like he just he just thought like every time I get in this ring, I'm gonna just overpower whoever it is. I'm gonna outwork them, and you know, I'm gonna get the win which is not a bad attitude to have, but you got to understand there's other guys like you or better in the world. Yeah. It, it just so happened to be another black man from America, you know? Yeah, and, and it reminded me of the Winky Wright versus uh, Trinidad fight. Mm, okay. It reminded me of that. Like, I'm just going to come forward and I'm going to beat you up and try to mow you down. And and Winky was just like, nah. Nah, yeah. straight, straight, straight behind the jab. I'm going to beat you up behind the jab. And then slowly but surely, I'm just going to punish you. And, and and you have to figure out a different way to, to do this. I don't. Right. Right. It, look, so, it just it just looked like the camps, you know, it was a big difference in camps. Like you could tell, like it was one track minded on Spence side and then on 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 Buzz side. They looked like, well, they was going over a lot of game planning. Like, what if he do this? What if he do that? What if he come with this? You know what I mean, he was prepared for everything. Did you see the uh, interview? I'm not sure if it was on Fight Hype or one of the other uh, other channels, but they was talking to Shakur about it. And they said, we had to tell Bud backstage not to fight him because he, he he said he didn't want to look like no bitch or no punk or whatever. He's like, we had to tell him, like, yo, don't go out there and fight him. Like, go out there and box him. Show that you're the better boxer. He's like, man, right. y'all trying to tell me I can't whoop this man. He's like, no, we know you can whoop him. But we want you to show how skilled, how skillful you are when you do it. Right. All that's gonna come to you, and that's what I, bro, I ain't gonna even lie, Greg. I was expecting round four, five, six, a fight to break out. I was expecting Bud to just go, "All right, I'm done. I'm done with this. I'm yeah. done. Like, let's get to it. Let, let's 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 show everybody what you're able to do, and I'm gonna counter everything that you. Do. Yeah. But for, for for him to go in there and be so poised and controlled, and to just to just outbox this man and pick him apart and then just undress him in front of the world, man. I just didn't, I, I didn't see it going that way. Yeah. I don't think, I don't know. I don't think nobody was prepared for, you know, that level of boxing from, from Bud Crawford because everything, every, every, everybody kept speaking on the fact that, Oh, he's been, he get hit too easy. he been hurt before, you know, he starts slow and this and that. And I think with, people don't understand is like when you got a 12 round fight, that's a long time. You know what I mean? So starting slow is not really, to me, it's not a thing. Like I'm just, I'm just seeing where he coming from. You know what yeah. I mean? If, and it's crazy because back in the day, you used to hear a lot about the fill out rounds. Oh, mm -hmm. it's only the first round. It's the fill out round. Second round. Nowadays guys, you know, they want you to get straight to it, but you can get hurt in there bad. Yeah. And, um, I just felt like he handled it well, man. He kept his composure. He stayed relaxed. And you just, you just saw the, the big separation in the two fighters. Very big separation. And one of the things I saw uh, another upload was these guys. I'm not sure of their name. I should have wrote it down. But they're from uh, overseas or maybe they live here. 
and they were in his camp and they were recording him. They were doing like they would they would come and be a part of his uh, buds camp, but they were recording mm -hmm. it. And in it, before the fight happened, they was going, wait till y'all see the, see the jab. Wait till y'all see the jab. And I was mm. like, oh, fuck. Like, it, it, I, I'll send you the link uh, if I can pull it, if I can find it. They kept saying, wait till you see the jab. The jab's going to be crazy. Yeah. And I was like, man, they already had, they have been working on this the entire time, man. Yeah. And, and, and for Bud to come out and just like out jab him, have his hand up in a proper place. You know, when you jab and you're supposed to keep your hand up to, to be able to catch and parry and everything. And for him to just have Every it's like everything that they like they just watched everything and they just picked it all apart and they and they had a game plan for anything that he could that he could possibly do and it was just it was like wow like is are we really doing this at the round six or seven yeah like I what mean, are you gonna do now yeah people people a lot of people who don't understand boxing or don't really pay attention to boxing it's like when they seen Earl Spence. A lot of people just kept saying, oh, he big, oh, he strong, oh, he wear you down. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but a lot of guys question themselves when they're in that ring because boxing is an exposing sport because you can't pass the ball to somebody and you can't put the blame on somebody else. You really can't. Even if the coach didn't do his job, you still have to fight. Still got to go in there and do it. So it was just crazy to see Bud adjusting every little thing he do. But when you think about it, Earl Spitz really come with like three different elements where he got a good jab, he forced himself on you, and he he and he consistent. Like he he's determined. But that's it. Yeah. All the all the tricks of the trade, you don't really see too much of that. You nah. just see a man working. But this was a fight where he needed the tricks. And and and. I told someone, I said, I felt the same way about this fight after it was over, the same way I felt about Deontay Wilder. What you going to do after that right hand ain't working, man? Yeah. What you going to do yeah. after that ain't happening? And I felt like with Deontay Wilder, not to say anything bad about him, but it was almost like he had used this weapon so much that he had gotten comfortable with just yeah. using that. So he forgot about the jab. He forgot about the setup punches. He forgot about, you know, using his one, two or, or baiting guys in. And it was just straight out, you know, I'm going to get close enough to you and I'm going to launch this missile. But what you yeah. going to do in that don't work no more, man. Yeah. And a lot and, of people don't prepare for that. And it's, it's inevitable at some point, And this is why I love not just boxing, but this is why I love boxers. Good, really good or excellent boxers. After I figure out what you can do, I can undress that shit. There ain't nothing else you can do about it. You need yeah. something else. Because once I go through, once game, uh, Game plan A ain't working. I can go to B, C, D, and E. And, and Bud yeah. showed him like, "Look, here go my whole two set. Them two, that nail and that hammer you got ain't gonna do it tonight." Yeah, I got the screwdriver. You know, I got the monkey wrench in here. I got all the tools, my guy. What you gonna do after the, after that? Uh, run people down and beat them up don't work. And that's yeah. what we saw. And, and I was just like, man, like maybe they should stop it, round. Eight. You know what I mean? Like the, he ain't doing much of nothing, but going back. And then you could hear the commentators, uh, Mauro Ronaldo. He sounded like we were in round eight. Uh, I was like, "Damn, this ain't good." Like they they had promise for him, and it's not, it's not coming <laughs> yeah. to fruition. We're here yeah. in round eight, and we might want to uh, start thinking about where is this going? It ain't going nowhere. Yeah, nowhere. So now, what you think about it? One fifty four the rematch. I mean, from the things I saw, I don't think. I don't think Earl Spence can make that big of an adjustments that quick. I, I'm saying quick because I'm imagining they'll be fighting probably by February. You think but, so? Yeah, with the rematch clause, maybe February. But if it's next summer, I think that'll be better for him. And going up and wait, he'll feel better. Mm -hmm. But the skill set, he going to have to go to school. now. He's already been in the school of Derrick James. It's not a bad school, but it's not the school that you need to get ready. Now, I'm not saying he has to drop Derrick James, but what he has to do is bring in a substitute teacher. Need an addition. He needs somebody with him. Yeah, because in order for him to adjust to these things, he already got a, a thing about Bud because Bud beat him up. See, he didn't just beat him, he beat him up. Mm hmm. You know I mean, it's different when somebody beat you up because somebody beat you up. Now you're like, damn, 
Was there anything I could do? You questioning yourself. So now he's gonna have to bring somebody in that can motivate him mentally to believe he could beat Bud, but then he gonna also have to have somebody come in that can teach him the things that'll give Bud some trouble. I don't know if he can learn that in a matter of months. When me and you originally spoke about this, I said, I think Bud is a smarter fighter, the better boxer, he's faster. I don't care about his athleticism. But I said the fact that he can box and that he was smarter uh, yeah. And he, he not just both of them have dog, but Bud has a different type of dog. His dog is like, you got to kill me because I ain't got nothing yeah. else. I don't have nothing else. Yeah, like, I'm taking I want the dangerous fights to prove that I am that dude. And when right. you talked me and you had talked about it, I was like, man. I can't see I can see him getting beat. I can see Bud getting beat up and, and, and getting hurt in a fight, you know, and losing a fight. But at the same time, I could also see him staying in there and doing what was needed only thing that he needed to do was be poised which they kind of it's like they worked on that the only thing that bud to me needs to do is just not be over his front foot uh putting his face out there you know to get hit and just right. and just stay with the game plan stay in the pocket and that's what he did and when i was looking at it, i was like damn like the shit that he needs to work on is like they saw it and i was like all right bud this is a this is a top level fight we ain't, we ain't doing that fuck shit no more like you got to come on with it and you right. watched it, and he just he just went through it. So now when I look at him, like, at 154, what do you change? Yeah. I mean, it's a lot. And that's why I'm saying in a matter of months, he, I don't think he could get it done. The first thing I saw was the balance. His balance was all. Oh, it was all over the place. You know, you know what I mean? His timing was off. Um, mm. the, the way he, Even the way he threw his punches put him in trouble. You know what I mean? Cause he, Bro, he was winding up. Yeah, winding up, falling in. Yeah, you know what I mean, Re reaching for punches, yeah. things like that. He got to correct if he going to make it a better fight. Also, he got to be patient. He 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 didn't like how the first round felt, and he tried to push the issue in the second round, and it got him knocked down. And then the third round, he come back out hard again. Like he got to learn how to just relax and remember, bro. We got thirty six minutes. Take your yeah. time. Break yeah. him down. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, so. Um, I want to go back to that first round of that fight. Did you see when they were jabbing back and forth with each other? And yeah. Bud slipped to the inside and he jabbed and he moved and he and he, he slipped out. And Arrow's jab was like three feet off of him. And I was like, yeah. that's a problem right there. I was like, that's gonna be a problem. I think I was like, he just figured out that he's a faster fighter just off that. Did you yeah. did you catch that? Yeah, I mean, you 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 kind of you didn't want to get like have a, like I didn't want to have like a cocky feeling because I was picking Bud, Shit. but I but I kind of like I'm like oh this is gonna be a long night for Spence mm -hmm. because because the one thing that I did pay attention to like you said Bud was working behind his jab which is the proper way to go about things but he was composed he was real relaxed I think that was the most impressive part to me that he was so relaxed mm -hmm. and he could see everything that was going down yeah bro went. When he when he slipped that jab and it went by him by like three two three feet, I was like, uh oh, yeah. uh oh. Yeah. And my cousin was like, what he uh sent me a message. My cousin Ryan, he was like, yo, what you see so far? I was like, he's obviously faster. I just saw him uh move out the way of a jab and it went by him by three feet. And Bud looked at him and Arrow looked at him. I was like, yeah, you know, usually in the, even in the amateurs, when you're faster than, than somebody, you know it. You yeah. can tell because it's based on how you move and the, the, their lack of ability to catch up to you as you uh, progress yeah. through the fight. So Absolutely. I was like, "Yeah, this is this is this is going to be one of them nights, man. They better knuckle, they better buckle up real tight for this one." Yeah. What did you think? What do you think of the uh, one thirty five division? Let's move on out of that because I could talk about that fight all night. I, I mean, one thirty five division is is it's is heavy, tricky. man. It's heavy. But it's tricky because a lot of people giving I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about Dev first. A lot of people giving Dev uh flack and slack because he talking about going to 140. But I, I've been trying to explain to people he's been at 35 the longest. He's trying to grow as a fighter. I gotta go. I gotta go to 140. I'm getting older. You know what I mean? And it's, and it's probably draining him to make 35. Shakur is coming from 26 30. Yes, to sir. 35. So mm -hmm. of course he's of course he's gonna have a filled day. Of course he's feeling great. Tank 
got the kind of frame, he can go back and forth from 30 to 40. You know what I mean? Um, and then there's a bunch of other guys just around where it, it, things are interesting. But I, I don't know. It's 30, 30 is tricky. I mean, 35 is tricky because some of these fights won't get made. Like, like, like a lot of people were saying, what you thinking about uh, Shakur and, and De Los Santos? And I'm like, that'd be a good fight. De Los Santos just beat, um, he just beat, uh, what's that kid name? He from PA. I forgot his name. He can fight though. He upset. Matter of fact, De Los oh, Santos Dorno? was the one. That one Adorno, was it? Yeah, Adorno. Yeah. Okay. He beat, Joseph he beat Adorno. Adorno. And he also upset Ryo. You know what I mean? Remember they was saying that kid Ryo. Oh uh, yeah, because I had I, I thought I thought El Ryo would be one of the next ones to uh take off, but he right he, he been flat a couple times. Right. So so it's guys like that hanging around. I mean, it's a bunch of names. Yeah. It's an inter interesting weight class. You know what I mean? I just wish they make these fights. You know what I mean? I, I, and I think it is better for Dev to move up since he's been doing it since he was what, sixteen or seventeen at one thirty five. Right. Right. So we're talking about a, a kid that's like 23, 24 years old, who's who's like five, eight, five, nine in, in real life. And his body is probably like, yo, we we can't suck down no more, man. So let's let's right. go on up to 140, which would be an even better test to me for Dev at 140, because yeah. you got some you got some heavy hitters there at 140 as well. You got Subri Subriel, Matias, you got Gary Antoine Russell, uh, yep. you got you got T.O. Uh, Shit, I'm Roley sure. got a belt up there. Oh, I forgot about Roley. Even though that would be, I think that would be an easy fight for Dev. Uh, th there's quite a few fighters at 142. That's a heavy. That's a heavy, heavy staff division as well, man. You can't sleep mm -hmm. on that division either. And that's that's what I'm saying. Like 35 and 40, just interesting. There's a mm -hmm. lot going on. Tank. I feel like they need to put Tank in there with a T.O., with a Dev, with a Shakur. They need to make that happen because it's starting to look like with Tank, it's just perfect matchmaking. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I know Tank can fight. I believe he can fight. I believe in his skills. I believe in his power. Absolutely. I've seen it. I've seen it. But it's just like we need to really put him in one of these super fights. You know and I mean? he needs to be because he's the older out of all these guys. He's like 27, 28 years old. So right. If he's talking right. about he want to get out the game, they need to go ahead and make these fights. At one thirty five, yeah. Shakur is right there. I don't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want them to make that fight right away. But that's the best fight at one thirty five to be made. Yeah, and sometimes I mean, and sometimes you gotta have those fights because it's too much talking going on, and people are gonna lose interest. You know what I mean? You don't want people to lose interest because just as fast as we was talking about Tank and Ryan, and then we was talking about Shakur moving to thirty five and putting on a great performance, and then we was talking about. Um, uh, what's his name, Devin and Lomachenko, right after that, we had Bud and, and, and Spence, and that took over. The Bud and Spence conversation washed all of that away. Yeah, You know what I mean? So they but the reason why, but you had to understand it, but you know the reason why. That was a yeah. real fight. That was a fight yeah. we all wanted. And that that's fight had I'm been saying. bubbling for so long. And Ryan and Tank, that was a good fight, but that wasn't what we was clamoring, clamoring for. We didn't want that. You right. know, we, we know that Ryan can fight, but we know that he ain't on a level of, of, of a tank date. We know that Shakur is there and Shakur needs a test because he's calling everybody out. He's he making a mess on Twitter, especially now. So we need to see those type of fights. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. But 140, the 140, is, there's some bangers there, man. I think this would be a good test for Dev to find out where he where he is right now. But I still think like a, a Gary Antoine Russell, man, I think that's like the cream of the crop, right? There. Yeah, he he definitely like a wild card. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because he hasn't he hasn't had the opportunity to fight for a title, but you could clearly see he's ready for a shot, probably with anybody, because he for the experience he don't have as a pro, he has a lot of experience as an amateur. But even in the pros, he's fought some seasoned guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? He just he just overwhelmed them. If he don't find somebody that can slow him down, he's going to keep doing the same thing over and over. So I think putting him in a bigger fight, you know what I mean, would be great. Who would you like to see him test it up against? I mean, I, I like the Subriel Matias fight. I like the Roley fight. I like I like all of those fights. They, they saying Josh Taylor. No, not Josh Taylor. I'm sorry. Uh, Tio. Tio. I like the Tio fight. That would be a I good like, fight, too. I like all of those fights for a guy like uh, Gary Antoine because he – 
I mean, he's a humble kid. He's been putting in the work. And all he wanted is the opportunity. And I think he deserved it because he knocked out everybody, stopped everybody that he fought. Teofimo surprised me. I didn't expect him to do that to Josh Taylor. I'm not sure what type of night Josh Taylor had, but you showed up for the fight. You were there. Yeah. Uh, and you, you, the game plan was just bet, was just was was off. Uh, yeah. Teo looked very good that night. They said Gordo would show up for the fight. I heard an interview where Bill Haney said before that fight went down, he said Gordo needs to start showing up at these type of fights because this other guy that just showing up trying to knock people out. That's not how. That's not boxing. Boxing, yeah. you try you try to show up and knock people out in boxing. That's how you get hurt. You yeah. know what I mean. Uh, and for those who are listening, man, boxing is not just about being brave and being stupid enough to get in the ring, but it's about being smart and, and execution of punches and, yeah. and setting yeah. traps. You can't just go in there thinking you're gonna throw a bunch of punches and get a guy out of there. Those guys that are like that, they become great action fighters. But those are the guys that you all see later on in life. They don't look too well, right? You know, they take right. a lot of damage. They they go through a lot. They put their bite through a lot of shit, you know. So uh, right. learning learning the, the basics of boxing and, and the, the levels of boxing, that, that's what that's the biggest need. That's the biggest need. And it's the biggest to do that that should be on anybody's to do list when you're when you're learning a sport. Right. How hard is it for you as a coach? Because I've seen a, a, a clip of you. You was like, man, I ain't telling you to throw a million punches to just throw them. I'm telling you to throw a million punches. So when you get to a million and one, you already know what it is. Yeah. How yeah. often do you have to continue to reiterate that with, with the young fighters coming up? I mean, every day, because you got to look at the game now. It's a lot of influence. So I could teach some good shit. You're going to go home, watch YouTube, and look at some shit you want to do. A lot of people think their style is, you know what I mean, what they see. You know, your style is developed in the gym. You know what I mean? Your style is based off how you move, you know, how you react to things yeah. and how you, and you know, how you see things. And what they don't understand is you see more than they see because you've been around. I've been around boxing. I've been around boxing really almost all my life. But as a student, since I was 12 years old, I'm, mm. I'll be 37 in a couple of days. So I've been around this game a long time and I know what a fighter look like. I know how fighters act. I know how fighters fuck with their brains. They tell themselves, you know, things. My bad. They tell they tell themselves things, you know, that's that's not needed. You know what I mean? They 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 they, they just sorry about that. It's they just love. find they just find reasons for for shit. You know what I mean? It's it's just like life. Yeah. Like when, when things is happening, you you wondering why, you know, what should I do? Why should I do this? Why? When sometimes all you got to do is just do what I tell you. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's they, like they, our parents told us. They look at something that's already a shiny product, but they still forget that that shiny product had to go through a process to get to that. Get to that. Yeah. You know? Yeah. All diamonds, all diamonds need to be cut and crafted down to what we see. They don't just come Absolutely. out like that. They just come out looking nice. But what we end up seeing, it, it has to be crafted into yeah. And they looking at finished products and they don't get it. They they looking at finished products, they don't understand it. And they like, well, I saw this. I saw like all right, for instance, I got I had, I've been training a guy for a month. And he come in the gym and he asked me all these questions. He said, Yo, you think I could turn pro? I'm like, hold on, I'm 35. I'm like, you could, but I wouldn't expect, you know, too much out of your career. I mean, you could definitely fight, but they would they would try to use you as an opponent because of your age right away. You know, he like, oh, all right, well, what you think? I'm like, you got to put some work in. So the guy started working. He was doing everything I told him. But then just last week, he come in there. Hey, Greg, what you know about Purnell? I said, what you mean what I know about Purnell? Like, what you talking about? What you think about him? I said, you don't need to watch him. He said, why? I said, because everything Purnell do, it's not something that you teach somebody. It's, mm. it's he, he fight off of how he feel. You know what I mean? I say, he he a rhythm dude. I say, you don't have it yet. He's like, how you going to tell me what I had? That's my that's my style. I like how it's slippery. I said, no, you like that. I said, but what he is is something totally different. And, and, you may, and you may not understand that for years. And you may not understand it now. I mean, up until you die. You don't know. So I let the guy train. Started, I started seeing him working on all this shit. 
you know, that I didn't, you know, that I didn't implement just yet. But he working on it and don't know what he doing. Mm. So he like, gee, why you ain't saying nothing to me? I said, because you ain't with me today. You somewhere else. He's like, what you mean? I said, you've been at home watching YouTube. I mean, you you feel as though I'm not moving you along further enough, even though you only been with me a month and you want to come in here and work on all this other shit. He's like, no, I'm, you told me to shadow box. I'm shadow box. I said, yeah, but when I had you shadow box and you working on your jab and you on the line, you only been here a month. He said, so what you saying? I'm like, you you in there working on slipping. I said, and that's based off of you watching Purnell. I said, but you don't even understand it. So basically what I'm trying to say is it's very hard to to train fighters because, for one, you got to get in their head. For two, you got to get somebody that really listen. You know what I mean? For three, you got to continue to, you know, to keep them listening. You can lose interest, right, you know, fast. It can happen fast because, Guys, they get influenced by a lot, so it's tough. It's tougher now than it was back in the day. Yeah, and I think uh, like the, what you said is you got to be able to get in their head, and they got to be able to listen. Boxing yeah. is about trust between you and a fighter, between a trainer and a fighter. It's about trust. Whatever I tell you, you got to be willing to do at the yeah. drop of a dime. Like I'm telling you it because I feel like it may work or it may get us to the point where the opponent may slow down or slip up, and that's what we're looking for, and we want to yeah. go in that direction. For yeah. Pernell Whitaker, Pernell Whitaker was a different animal, man. He would come out and just box you straight up, or he would come out and go to the inside and bang and box you, or he may come out and look real slippery one night. Yeah. You know what I mean? And like then, you said, Pernell was like, him and fighters like him are like the ultimate painters when it comes to boxing, because they right. learn it, and then they take the craft, and they mold it into to their style. Right. And then guys, they don't watch fights anymore. They watch highlights. Mm. So they're not they're not even looking at the product. They just looking at something he did that night, and then they they watching ten clips of it, and it's like, oh, I want to fight like that. Like, bro, you don't understand how those things happen. Like, you gotta, you gotta it don't work laugh. like that. It don't work yeah. like that. Yeah, it take a lot of hard work, man. Salute to you, Greg, man, because I did it for a while, and I, I loved it. I still love it, but my life went into a totally different direction, man. And, and yeah. to sit there and to to try and coach after being a fighter, that got to be the hardest shit, knowing that you got to deal with some hard head motherfuckers. Yeah. But you know the game, and you was a hard head dude as uh, yourself, so it just come with it. Yeah, absolutely. So, so what fights are you looking forward to coming up? I mean, um, of course, I want to see this uh, Richard Hitchinson. I mean, Richardson Hitchens versus uh, Jose Zapata. I think that's going to be a, a good chess match. They Early finalized year. that? Yeah, they locked in for September 14th or 15th. Oh, 15th I, I got to see that. I got to see that. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. Then, of course, Ch uh, Charlo Canelo. Canelo. I think I think Charlo can outbox him. He could. Yeah, he could. But I'm wondering if he's going to get Texas tough for me. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? Try to prove to Canelo that he a man. Nah, and and it's like, don't do. If it. he stays smart, if he if he take a little bit from Bivol, and he take a little bit from Mayweather, with keeping his distance mm -hmm. and just using his speed and using his ability, and then later on tightening up and using his strength, I think he could put on a great performance. But really great. But Canelo has a way of making guys feel like they're not doing nothing, and they get they you know they get overwhelmed with the whole moment. Because yeah. it's, it's a big fight and PBC gonna make it look real big. And he and Canelo, he'll draw you in and make you let you throw punches. He'll make it look right. like you're doing something, you ain't really doing nothing. You know, right. I think Charlo, for, for him to be a six foot tall guy, stay behind the jab, work, do the same, have to implement the same game plan that you did with Castaño. You know, right. I think I think doing that, uh counter countering Canelo when he's throwing these shots, uh and just keeping him at a, keep him at a safe distance where you can just operate. He you can see him, but he can't get in. He's too short. He's five foot seven, maybe five foot eight. Take right. advantage of that. Take advantage of that. And as a, I feel like you you would be a lot healthier at that weight because you don't have to lose as much weight as you normally do. Right. I right. think I think it would be I think it would be easier for him. Yeah, like that that like you said, the text is tough. I don't think you got to do that. Just stay behind a jab. Uh, yeah. Pick your shots. Use that crazy jab that you got that he got when he goes to the body that that kind of fucks people up. Like use all those uh, weapons and, and skills that you have to, to right. execute a game plan to get you to win. And and I, 
later in, in the later rounds, you may get, we may see a stoppage. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I mean, you just you just never know with this game, but that's going to be a great fight because Jamel got a lot left. Mm-hmm. Canelo, Canelo on the other end, he's he's dying out. He can fight. He can still fight, but the truth is he's dying out. And the, and the reason he's dying out is because he got a lot of fights. Yeah. You know okay. what I mean? He, on, he almost had 65 fights. And for, this is what I wanted, to, I, I wanted to ask you. I, I know I'm cutting you off, but go ahead. You think it's you think it's the fact that he has a lot of fights, or that over the last two years he fought too many times and he he just needed to rest? I think it's the fights. I think it's the the uh, the amount of fights in the last few years. I think it's the weight jumps. Mm. I think it's a lot. It's a lot that go into that lifestyle. You know, what I mean, he he goes through pains and shit like anybody else, but he he's endured more because he's been doing it since he was 15 years old. That's when these guys were still amateurs, these he was a pro. Yeah. You know what I mean? So he been he been really uh he been really pushing his body since he was a child. And I think it's you know, it's slowing down for him a lot. I don't li- I don't take everything I hear to heart. I know I was listening when he said that uh over the couple the past couple fights he had like that hand injury or whatever. Uh, mm-hmm. So it was kind of like for went while while he was fighting, he couldn't give his best performance. But when I listened to that, I was like, no, nah, that ain't it, bro. That ain't it. That's that's knee injuries, that's that's hand injuries, and that's just and all that comes from the amount of fights that you have. You know, yeah. it, ain't, it ain't just one thing, it's an amalgamation of the things that you've gone through and went through that got you to yeah. this point. So yeah. I think it, I think I think it should be a good fight. I, I don't think much of the undercard though. I'm like, y'all need more for this undercard. I mean, the Lubin, the Lubin and the uh, Ramos fight, that's a sure. That should be good. Sure, that's a for sure fire fight. You know what I mean? That's that's a rumble. Uh, well, Lubin, other than that? Yeah. I mean, other than that, you, they did give us Barrios, Barrios and Ugas. Now, it's not the fight we want, but it's an interesting fight when you're just talking about boxing because Barrios gave... Thurman in some trouble. You True. know what I mean? And he he's fresh to 147, and then you already fighting new guys. So I think I think it's just interesting to see. Not the now I feel what you're saying is not the fights we want to see, and that could be on this undercard, but it, it to me it is some good fights. Okay. Okay. All right. But do I you, agree, it's not the fights we want to see. Yeah. Do you think <laughs> that before Errol took the Bud Crawford fight. He should have. He should have fought Keith Thurman. I think he just should have fought anybody just to get a look. Yeah. But Keith Thurman, Keith Thurman fight would have helped him a lot. I think that would have, mean? Greg. I think that would have been a best fight for him. Not only would have been a money maker, that probably would have been a million pay per view uh by a fight. But you had a guy that that can box, that can punch, that can set traps. And he's a very mobile uh, fighter in the ring. Like, he uses the whole ring. I think that would have been the best guy to fight. I think, listen, I'm thinking like you thinking, right? I agree. But I'm also thinking this. We can't sleep on Keith Thurman. What if he fuck around and beat Spence? And then we don't get Spence and Bud. Well, then we would know that Keith Thurman and Bud are the better fighters in the division. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that. True. But I'm just saying that's why that fight didn't get made. Because, you know, this is the thing. This is the truth right here. The overseers of the sport, the the, the guys who run in the business, they, they know. know they know when shit be wrong with these fighters. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They they knew it was a chance if we put him in with Thurman, Thurman might fuck around and get him. So if we're gonna lose him, we're gonna lose him to Bud. We're not gonna lose him to to Thurman. And the reason being, Bud is still. A more appealing guy than Thurman, even though Bud wasn't the favorite. You know, why, what I'm talking. Why about? do you say that? Because Keith Thurman, when you hear when you hear Keith Thurman talk, it's like a joke. It's like he's joking. It's like he's playing around. Come on, Greg, yeah. but he can fight though, bro. No, no, no. I'm agreeing. No, remember, I'm I'm agreeing with you because I respect Keith Thurman ever since the amateurs. I respect him. He always been a top three guy, top five guy. You know what I mean? He always been in the top rankings as an amateur and as a pro. The thing is, but is that 
guys like I wonder. He he always like, man, I wonder with him. You know what I mean? Because he came to 47. He didn't fight the names, but he fought some good fights. But he always looked like he was on his way out, and then he knocked the guy out. So it's like, I wonder. But with Thurman, it's like, this guy, nobody take him serious, even though he is to be taken serious. Mm -hmm. But it's like, for some reason, like, look at Thurman now. He He's actually entertaining an exhibition with Clarissa Shields. He nah, don't do that. He, don't do that, Key. Yeah, he should have. He should have deaded that as soon as they started talking about that. He should have said, "Listen, I respect her. That's my lady. I'm, you know, that's my friend or whatever. She a lady, but I ain't doing that." Right. And just put that. But he actually entertained it. You know what I mean? So that's what I mean. It's like he the type of guy. It's like you don't know what you're getting with Keith Thurman. Well, Bud, you knew what you was getting, and I also knew PBC was going to get Bud over there. I knew they was. Cause once, cause once, once he wasn't happy with Bob, even though he made a stop pass, uh, BLK Prime, but once he wasn't happy with Bob, it wasn't nowhere else for him to go. And then uh, Eddie Hearn from the Zone said, "He's like, dude, I can sign you, I can get you paid." He said, "But I will not be able to make those fights for you if you come over here. So Real better, shit. you better off being independent." And I salute Eddie Hearn just for that, just for telling, like, I can give you some, I can get you paid, but you ain't gonna, you really not gonna get no fights over here. Because Eddie Hearn knew if I did that, if I signed this kid and I gave him whatever type of money he was looking for and I was happy with it, I knew in the end I wouldn't be happy with it because I couldn't make those fights and that would make me look like I wasn't doing something right. Shit, he you know wasn't. I mean? Even when the Andre situation. Andre didn't get Golovkin. He didn't get Canelo. And he was because, over there with you. Because what it is, because what it is, is you have, when you have a stable of fighters and they're popular, and then you got fighters that spread it all around, you're going to always want those fights to happen on your platform. Because at the end of the day, PBC has the stables. Mm -hmm. So at 168, they don't have just one good fighter. They got about five, six. 147, they didn't have just one good fighter. They had about five, six of them. You know what I'm saying? They always load it up. So it's like at the end of the day, you're going to end up over there. Mm -hmm. Somehow, some way, you're gonna end up either fighting one of them, and it could go like Ryan, where you get stopped, and then now you got to switch trainers and figure out what you're gonna do with your career, or you're gonna go over there, you're gonna lose or win, but you're still in the money circle because there's other fights for you. Mm -hmm. Where, where if you look at Golden Boy, they had Virgil Ortiz, right? Virgil Ortiz before those situations was the standing on this fight. Virgil Ortiz was on the road, right? But who else could you really match him up with? Blair Cobb? That was the best matchup. That was it. And Blair Cobb, 140-pounder. They had to go find guys. They had to go find guys for Virgil Ortiz to fight. The guys he was fighting was guys that wasn't even fighting no more. You know what yeah, I mean? The one fight that he had that was a, I thought would have been a better scrap was when he fought, uh, uh, was it my man, Maurice? Yeah, Maurice Hooker. Yeah, Maurice Hooker. Yeah. But Maurice Hooker's hanging, hanging on one toe. You know what I mean? <laughs> You feel me? He said so, a toe. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> so it's like PBC, they make it where you got to come deal with them somehow, yeah. somewhere. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's why it's like, but he did the right thing. Canelo, he did the right thing. You know what I mean? Because he got the names over there. Yeah. Do you think for Virgil Ortiz, he should work on staying at or going up to 154? Yeah, I think Virgil should go to 154, 160 and be healthy. And you know what I mean, get the job done because he's a great fighter, but he is he is young and he not understanding these issues and it could cost him. Mm -hmm. It could cost him his career. You know what I mean? Yeah, a lot of people don't understand. Uh if you're not doing it properly and you don't have the proper people in your corner, when you're trying to lose weight, you could do yourself a disservice. Uh, mm -hmm. for those who don't know, your brain is 70% water. So if you have to lose weight and you have to water drain and you're boiling down, you're also boiling down the water in your brain, which is why you become delusional or delirious the night of a fight, which is the reason why your death perception is so fucked up and you can't see everything as clear as you're supposed to. So mm -hmm. be careful when you're doing that. Make sure y'all weight training and uh, cutting weight the correct way. That's don't just it. don't just start don't just start. Oh, I ain't gonna eat tomorrow. No, don't don't do that to yourself. Do it the right do it the right way. Do it the right way.
All right, so let's move up a weight class. Let's go up to 154. Do you think yeah. Charlo comes back down to 154, win or lose? I don't think he will. That's that's an interesting thing because he's getting a chance to go up and fight the best at 68, right? Now, let's say he win. That makes him the best at 68. Yes. So it's going to be a lot of money calling. Mm -hmm. 54, got some names, but it's going to be a lot of money calling at 68. I honestly think he stays, he stays at 68 or 60, depending on how he feel. I would stay at 68 and maybe come down one way class, but I ain't going back down too. My yeah, body, your body I'm gonna doing. your body gonna tell you, yo, we just blew up for that and we had a chance to breathe. We're not going, we're not doing that no more. Yeah, we're not doing that no more. Yeah. Uh the Roy Jones effect, taking only seven to eight months off to get back in the ring. And when we saw Roy come back, his body looked soft. The first fight against uh Antonio Tarver, he did okay, but that second fight did not look too good. You know, you could tell yeah. he was struggling. His body was yeah. all soft and everything. But uh, I would say if you're gonna go down, go down one weight class. Don't go all the way back down to 54 and fight, bud. And, yeah. And he looking at you, knowing that something ain't right with you, and he started picking you apart. We already yeah. seen. Uh, we already seen what he do, did to one guy. You know. So uh, I'd say stay at 168. There's a great fight with Benavidez if you win. There's right. a good fight with Caleb Plant if you win. You right. know. You, Boo -boo you Andre. Yes, a guy that you were supposed to fight at 154, and that never happened. Now you get to fight him again. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So why why not why not just stay there and get those fights done and over with? I think that would be a better. I would think I think that would be a better look for him at one sixty eight. Yeah. Do you think Bivol should come down to one sixty eight just to fight Canelo? I mean, did Canelo didn't want to do it at sixty eight with Bivol. Because okay, I thought he did. I felt like he wanted the rematch, but he said at seventy five, he didn't yeah. want the. Rematch. He didn't want the rematch at 68 because he was still holding the ground at 168. So I think he felt like Bivol would take it from me at 68. Damn right. Why wouldn't he? Shit. I didn't. Yeah. For, for that fight, I didn't see him winning that fight. No way. I didn't see uh, Canelo getting that fight. I didn't think he yeah. had enough in a, in a tank to get that fight. Yeah. So going forward, what, what fighters, do you have any fights coming up with uh, your fighters? Trey Camps? Um, uh, I got my 130 pounder. He be fighting. He'll be fighting uh, October 21st uh, against another undefeated fighter from the city, and uh, I'm just looking forward to that right now. And then Jesse Hart, I think, will be back in the ring. Uh, I think in November or December. How long has Jesse Hart been out? Um, he's been well before. He just fought uh, about three weeks ago, a month ago. Okay, and I thought he had been out for a while. He, actually, he fought on the same card with Gary Antoine and okay. uh, Trayvon Marshall. So he just got back. He did a he did a two month camp with me, and then he got the second round stoppage. And then um, so now we're just looking to get back in there in November, December. I like the Trayvon Marshall kid too. I like yeah, him I like too. him a lot. Yeah, he got caught that uh, in that fight, but I I still like him. I think he's a really good fighter. Yeah, he just needs to he just needs to tighten up. He just got caught slipping. Yeah. Greg, how hard is it to keep the fighters focused? Like, do you is there certain things to look for when you're training them to know that they not that they're paying attention when you hitting the pads or the mitts with them and everything or when they sparring? Do you, yeah, can, you can you can you can you pick it up? Can you pick up on it? Yeah, you pick up on it because you know what they like when they when they in gear when they when they really turned all the way on and you know what they like when they when they bullshit. Um, it's very hard because things are happening fast in their life. You know what I mean? It's a lot of attention. Um, it's a lot of people around them that's, you know, saying different things. Uh, it's a lot of things that they're looking at. It's a lot of things that they want. You know what I mean? And you got to kind of keep them, keep them, keep them grounded. I don't, I'm the type of person, I don't like to get in people's business. I won't ask you about your kids. I won't ask about, about your wife and your lady and, you know, what you, how much money you got. I'm not that kind of person. But as a coach, it's crazy because you got to be like that because, you have to find out where the where the issues are. You know what I mean? So because you're kind of like a guardian at the same time. Yeah, man. It's like it's like I don't like to be in nobody's relationship business and all that. But if I know this girl is causing you trouble, I'm telling you, like, bro, leave her alone. You got to leave her alone. You got to get away from her. You know what I mean? Um, if I know your issue is some of your friends, yo, them dudes is. 
doing whatever they doing. You gotta leave them alone. You know what I mean? You can't get caught up in that circle. You know what I mean? You can't get you can't get caught up in the in that situation. So so it's a lot. It's a lot that goes into it when it comes to coaching and, and keeping these guys focused because I man, you just never know what kind of person you're dealing with, honestly. You know what I mean? I want to go back to that Spence fight. When Derrick James started saying, ha, 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 you got to do that, it was kind of like, oh, mm -mm. Yeah. I was like, uh-oh, this is bad. You yeah. got to do like this. Huh? Usually when I see that, it's like, uh-oh. My man's in a, that ran out of a uh, game plan. In a I, mean, tight spot. The third, I mean, by the third round, it was over. It was you over. say the third I, round? Yeah, third round, it was mm. over. Because the reason I say that, because Bud, from the look on Bud's face, Everything he thought Earl Spence was, everything he thought Earl Spence would do, he did it already. He had did it between round one and round three. He had already did it. So it was no more, it was no more like second guessing what you can do or what you have to do. He already knew. Just stay focused and, and keep putting my jab on him and keep and keep and, you know, keep letting him make the mistakes. All he did was let Earl Spence make the mistakes. And he capitalized on the mistakes. That's all he did. Like it stepping, wasn't. It wasn't. It stepping wasn't like forward no, slowly. Yeah, it wasn't plodding like, in front of him. Yeah, it wasn't like no big old, you know, big old game plan. I'm not saying they didn't have a game plan. They did, but it wasn't like it took all of this extra brain power because the guy brought himself to you. When somebody bring themselves to you, all you got to do is touch him. Yep. You know what I mean? He didn't have to go look for him. He didn't have to create too much. All he had to do was watch out for certain shots. With no certain angles. Movements. Yep. And look for certain movements. And that then he capitalized it. off it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He stepped in. You know when he getting ready to throw a, a hook because he stepped a different way. You know, he getting ready to go one, two. He go overhand, left. Like it, I yep. was like, man, I see all this shit coming out. If I'm seeing it, I know Bud in there like, yeah, here this come. And Bud yeah. got caught a couple times, but. It, it, yeah, you know, but it come with the game. Yeah, yeah it comes with the game. Like you gonna get hit if you don't think you are gonna get hit in boxing. You a fool, man. You you, you sure. stay the fuck away from that. But I, I was looking. Mm, my man got this. You said round three, Greg. I was like round six. I was like, all right, this is up. This is over. Round six, it was already over. Yeah. Round, round six, six, I was like, it's, it's, yeah. I was like, no. Nah. Um, yeah. like, like but I, but I, but what I mean by three is, like I said, he already saw. He had undressed him. He, yeah, he. Yeah. I, I, everything that you're going to do tonight, I seen it already within the first three rounds. Yeah, you ain't gonna do nothing much else uh, more than that, cause y'all ain't went back to the corner. Ain't nobody said nothing. Ain't nobody told you, hey, we need to switch it up. We are gonna go into game plan B. We gonna do things this way, cause he see what you're doing, and we need to make up for lost time uh, and, right. and for these rounds. So he don't, he he can't catch on to anything else. I didn't see none yeah. of that. And then yeah. that round seven, man, uh, when he got the two knockdowns in that round, beautiful uppercut. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. He and, and and then if and then you had to pay attention to Earl Smith's face, man. His face was changing round by round. He was getting worse and worse yeah, yeah. every round. So, you know, I mean, he just all the like all the hope, all the drive, all that shit was getting punched out of him. Yeah, it was. And you could see him like when he got knocked down in that in round seven, he got up like, man, what the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. Like he, like he was happening. telling himself, like, yo, we got to do something. Yeah, and it's happening so fast. And then here's the thing with Derrick James. It's not that Derrick James don't know or can't see or don't understand. It's I can't do nothing. I really can't do nothing. So, yo, I want you to ah, do something. Ah. Yeah, he's frust <laughs> he frustrated because he frustrated because, like, damn, I never seen my dog look like this. I yeah. never seen I never seen my dog in this situation right here. Yeah. And 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 because I never seen him in that situation. I don't know what to do because I just I never I never been here with him. Masterpiece, man. Masterpiece. Mm -hmm. And in a way, the way Bud fainted, the way he fainted to the inside on that on that on that on that double hook knockdown, the way he fainted, and Earl kind of leaned in with it. He's like, got you. And bang. Yeah. He turned over the second one. Bang. I was like, yeah, got you. That's it. I yeah. thought that was gonna be in the end of the fight. I was like, like, don't don't send him back out there. Yeah. Just a wrap for that. Beautiful, just just a, a beautiful, beautiful fight, man. I've watched that fight like a hundred times already. I ain't gonna even lie. Yeah, I, I've watched it a hundred times. What do you think about Andre? Do you think that his if this Benavidez fight? Because I like Andre. I think he's a very skilled fighter. Uh, 
his only problem to me is that he plays down to the level of competition when he fights him. If they are an okay fighter, then he fights okay. With that being said, this is going to be a great fight. Yeah. But I also think Bud has, Bud Crawford has laid out a blueprint that if you settle down, if you focus on what it is you're doing, you can get it done. I think Boo Boo is going to take a page out of Bud's book, slow, slow the action down, place his shots, you know what I mean, and make sure that Benavidez understand he in there with a man. You're not just going to walk up on me and swing punches. I'm not going for that tonight. Also, I think the Southpaw stance is going to give Benavidez a little trouble. Mm-hmm. I think the I think the uh, the experience that Boo Boo Andre has is going to give Benavidez some trouble, and I just think it's going to be a great fight if he don't catch if he don't catch Boo Boo with a big shot early on. I think we in for another boxing lesson. It should be. A, I think this is going to be a great fight, man. I think it's yeah. really going to be a good one. I, I'm a I'm a Boo Boo Andre fan. Uh, not a fan. I, I'm a supporter. I like the fact that he has very high level skill and we just haven't seen it because he hasn't had the proper fighter in front of him to show the world what he can do. And I mm-hmm. think this I think this might be the one. Mm-hmm. And I think we may. I like and I like David Benavidez, too. I can't I can't forget that. I think yeah, I like I like him a lot. Yeah. I like him a lot. Yeah. Like this is the fight that either. Either one guy's gonna get undressed or somebody's gonna get beat the fuck up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And and, and I'm a big supporter of both guys, but I think this is I think this is the one. I hope that like the 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 extra weight ain't a thing. And I don't think it will be because he's six foot one, six foot two, or some shit like that. Andre, and I think he he'll be all right. Yeah. Highly skilled guy, highly, highly, highly skilled guy in the amateurs and everything. So um, yeah. I look forward, I look forward to that fight. Yeah. At 175, who's the ultimate there? Better be Ev or or Bivol? I mean, they both hold the piece. They got the yin and the yang going on. They need to put that together. Yeah. <laughs> they yeah. both great. They both great fighters. They're both very strong. Both I can't smart. make a decision between those two, man. No, me neither. Me neither. It's like when I look at him, I was like, one guy can box you and then brawl you out of there, but the other guy would just box you, just pure box you yeah. and let you make the mistakes. And I think that's another yeah. fight where you can either get undressed or beat the hell up. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, I um I, I can't make a decision between those two at one at 175. No, me neither. Did you think the Daniel Dubois punch was low? No. I thought really? it was I thought it was a regular body punch, but according to, according to the uh rules and guidelines, it's it's low. Um yeah. But I don't I don't think that was a low punch. The only time, the only time they say when you get hit on the belt that it's low is if the belt is under the belly button. But if the belt is covering the belly button and you hit the belt, they say that's a clean shot. Because you know what I mean, they're high. Mm-hmm. I think and even all right, listen, even if it was kind of low. He still didn't hit him in his nuts. No, and so, that's the bigger thing. Like that, there was that was not in in the nuts. Like we, he wouldn't even be able to get up after that one. Right. So it was telling me that was just a great body shot, and you know, uh, and Usyk just he just he just didn't like how it felt. He probably didn't get hit with a body shot like that in years, and he just didn't like how it felt. And I and I and I hate that they did that to him. But overall, Usyk was the better boxer. He was, but for Daniel Dubois, it was like he didn't step it up and just keep going like, yo, if I was able to do that to you with that, I'm going to go ahead and just step it up and and get your ass on up out of here, man, because I can clearly see that what I'm doing is having some type of effect on you. And that, But that deals with dealing with uh, that level of a boxer. Mm -hmm. I've been here with heavyweights before who can box a little or they strong, but they gonna slow down. I never been in here with a guy with this type of movement. You know what I mean? Older. With this type of speed, this type of accuracy, this type of timing. And it was bothering him, it was throwing him off. Yeah. Definitely. But I, I he had he had it, man. All he had to do was just keep pressing him out. Yeah, he had to press it, true. 
Yeah, and it just seemed like he took his foot out the gas, or it kind of seemed like he lost his confidence after that whole situation. Yeah. And then, like, Usi got a hold of him. He kind of just said, I don't want to do this no more. Yeah. Yeah. But, Greg, I'm going to let you go ahead and get up out of here. You yawning like a big-ass bear. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go ahead and let you get, get to what you got to do. I appreciate you for stopping by the podcast, man. Thank no you. No problem. I appreciate you. Yes, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the legend, the one and the only, Greg Haggard. Man, yeah. thank you again, bro. Until next Bye. time. All yes, right, sir. you too. Get with you. Thank you. Yes, sir.